places that you go, everybody's got that cough that doesn't seem ever to go away. It's frightening because my healthy patients have had it, my sick patients have had it, it has seemed to plague everybody, and no one seemed to be spared from enjoying this hack at one time or another. It's extremely difficult to get, and it doesn't seem to be dependent on your immune system, which makes me suspicious that it's coming from an external source. An interesting article came across the internet a few months ago that talked about the chemtrail flu. Now realizing we're breathing some very strange things in the atmosphere, taking a totally different approach, and this has been a touchdown for my patients here at DHS. To this right now is 37 years of nursing experience. 37 years. I'm not, I'm not ashamed to say I am 60 years old. I remember what blue skies looked like. I remember as a small child looking up at the sky and watching a contrail. I was probably three or four years old sitting on a tricycle. It was March, it was really cold. It could have been a contrail. It was probably, looking back, some of their first geoengineering attempts. What I look at now in the intensive care unit where I work, I see Every year, something different happening. This winter, I didn't see a lot of flu. And interesting, the people that got the flu got the shot. What I see coming up on cultures now when people are testing for the flu, I see coronavirus, I see rhinovirus. That's the common cold. People are getting pneumonias from the common cold. This year, the theme seemed to be atypical pneumonia. What's atypical pneumonia? What that means in medical speak is something they cannot explain. Alveolar hemorrhage, the tiny little pockets in your lungs where you exchange oxygen. About was the nano aluminum that is making the particles so small uh, that it's rapidly absorbed through the skin, through the mucous membranes and lungs. Uh, but also, a, a particular thing of interest, man, was the fact that when you breathe air that contains nano aluminum, uh, it's rapidly absorbed through the, the mucosa, the lining of the nose, and enters the olfactory nerves, which are the smell nerves. And these olfactory nerves carry this nanoaluminum directly to the part of the brain that's first affected in Alzheimer's disease and most severely affected in Alzheimer's disease. And that's the entorhinal cortex and the hippocampus. Uh, when you look at Alzheimer's patients and measure aluminum levels, you see the highest level at that entry point from the olfactory nerve uh, into the entorhinal cortex. So uh, we have good evidence that Aluminum is entering the nose uh, and entering the part of the brain that's affected uh, in Alzheimer's, causing abnormalities in memory and learning and uh, attention and concentration. Um, when you do this experimentally, you can trace this with a radioactive tracer and watch the nanoaluminum pass along that nerve into the brain, and then it's distributed throughout the brain. Uh, you keep doing that day after day, the levels get pretty high. Now, my concern with the, the geoengineering was the word I've got, and when I started looking it up, and one of the conferences in which their speaker was talking about it, they talked about using nanoaluminum, and the reason they were using it, they say, well, it stays suspended in the atmosphere longer because the particle's so small and it acts like a cloud to reflect the heat supposedly back out to outer space. Uh, well, the problem is it slowly uh, descends down uh, to the Earth enters the lakes and streams, plants take it up. So then the aluminum content of the plants we eat is much higher. The water we drink is much higher. Uh, and we breathe it. Uh, the filters in house filtering systems not small enough to filter it out. So gradually the nanoaluminum content inside your house elevates. Uh, and what we know is that nanoaluminum is infinitely more inflammatory than normal size aluminum. So it's 
more toxic to the brain uh, once it gets in. And it can penetrate all parts of the cell. It easily passes through the membranes and blood-brain barrier, etc. Uh, so knowing uh, all of this, uh, I was just astounded that they were spraying uh, hundreds and thousands of tons of nano-aluminum all over the world, uh, particularly the United States. And I, you know, did a little research and looked in my own case in my skies, and, and I see these tight patterns, and it's obvious a pattern. It's not contrail. Uh, the whole thing contrails is nonsense. You watch a plane fly, and it turns on this cloud and, uh, of material coming out of the back of it, and then it stops, and there's a break, and then it starts back up. Well, I knew the jet's not cutting his engine off. Right. Uh, so, uh, you know, you have a, a 747 or a 767 or something. We know it's not turning its engine on and off, and we know that it's not flying in a checkered pattern. And uh, Then pretty soon, uh, for instance, we've noticed lately, there's been none of the chemtrails, or very few of them. Well, did the flight small to serve as cloud condensation nuclei? This important excerpt from Dr. Kirby's 2009 presentation makes it clear that IPCC climate scientists are fully aware that jet aircraft are dumping aerosols into the atmosphere with the effect of deliberate climate warming. There are very, there's plenty of evidence that large regions of the climate are lacking sufficient aerosol to form clouds. Contrails are a, a well-known example of that. These are not smoke trails. These are clouds which are seeded by jets dumping aerosols into the upper atmosphere. These are clouds which are seeded by jets dumping aerosols into the upper atmosphere. But if there was a conspiracy to use jet-produced clouds to cool the atmosphere, would it work? No. The contrails that are spreading, that you can identify as contrails, those would tend to warm the atmosphere. Everything that we know about um, would say that. The contrails that are spreading, that you can identify as contrails, those would tend to warm the atmosphere. Everything that we know about Deliberate um, would warming. say that. Dr. Pinner's statement is not taken lightly by climate scientists. Her comments echo the 1999 climate change publication titled IPCC Special Report on Aviation and the Global Atmosphere. On page 17, the quote, Contrails tend to warm the Earth's surface, similar to thin, high clouds, unquote. So, jet aircraft are dumping chemical aerosols high in the atmosphere to create artificial contrails that spread into thin, high, artificial clouds that your TV meteorologist has been told to misrepresent by telling the public they're only ice crystals. Dr. Kirby's almost too casual comment confirming that jet aircraft are dumping aerosols into the atmosphere reveals that this covert geoengineering and chemtrail operation is well known by government agencies like NASA, NOAA, and the FAA. The IPCC climate scientists being paid to churn out climate change propaganda, and geoengineers like David Keith, Ken Caldera, and their boss, Bill Gates. The public needs to demonstrate their outrage at this massive conspiracy of government secrecy that allows these toxins and bioweapons to rain down on global populations with impunity. We've had enough.